Welcome to Locked On NFL Thursday. Alex Clancy, Tyler Rowland. Got a fun show today. There's a bunch of 2-0 and teams. Where do they rank? There's a bunch of quarterbacks that are hurt. Which ones will we see back on the field soonest? And first, we're going to preview Thursday night football coming up tonight. Let's roll. <laughs> Locked on NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Alex Clancy here, Locked On Cardinals. Tyler Rowland with that big smile, Locked On Titans. Follow him at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter. Follow me at Clancy's Corner. We got a jam packed show today. Uh, first, Tyler, before we get into it, how excited were you after Sunday? Quickly, that your Titans pulled it out in overtime. Just real quick, uh, real quickly. Very, very <laughs> excited. Uh, not just that they were able to get a win when it was very unexpected, but th the manner in which it happened. Seeing some things come to life that uh, Titans fans were worried about. So it was a good weekend. Yeah, it's interesting. There were two missed kicks: one from your game and one from our game. Yours an extra point. Ours uh, the field goal for the Cardinals. That yeah. gave both teams a W. It's awesome. It's an interesting Thursday night football game tonight. We'll get to that here in just a minute. There's a bunch of 2-0 and teams, some surprising, some not so surprising. Where do they rank and who have the better chance of getting to 3-0? and And then there's a whole litany of quarterbacks that are putting their teams behind the eight ball. And some of them, you know, depend solely on their quarterback talent. You get them W's uh, in the NFL through the 17-week season. Let's first talk about tonight. Carolina's probably the biggest surprise 2-0 team, and we'll talk about that next segment. But Sam Darnold's looked great over 300 yards passing in the first two games. Christian McCaffrey, you know, is a cheat code. And then on the other side, Houston got a surprising win against Jacksonville in Week 1. Now Tyrod Taylor hurt. They came back to life in Week 2. Where do you see this? Is this Carolina by double digits? Or what are your first initial thoughts about Thursday night's game tonight? Well, I think double digits could be a, a little bit of a stretch, but I'm not ruling it out. Uh, I know right now the line on that, Houston is an eight point underdog at home. So anytime you see an NFL team getting over a touchdown uh, when they're at home as an underdog, usually the game is going to end up being closer than maybe some people are expecting. But for me, I'm just really excited to see this Carolina Panthers defense. I know a lot of the buzz right now is about Sam Darnold. And sure, he's looked very solid early on. But this Carolina Panthers defense is the best defense in the NFL through two weeks. They've only allowed 21 points. They've only allowed 380 total yards. They have 10 sacks. Every single one of those numbers is ranked first in the NFL right now. So I'm excited to see a guy like Brian Burns, who's emerging into a superstar. Shaq Thompson at linebacker for the Panthers. Absolutely going nuts right now. Looking like not only the best defensive player, but the best player in the NFL through two weeks. So me as a guy who uh, spent most of my time early in my football life Thinking about defense, I can't lie. I'm very excited to see this Panthers defense and what they can do against Davis Mills. You talked about Tyrod Taylor being a little bit injured, and now that he is going to be out for this game, we're going to see the third-round rookie quarterback, Davis Mills, out of Stanford. Did not look great last week. He didn't look absolutely miserable, though. Eight for 18, 102 yards, had an interception, had a touchdown, but overall, I'm just excited to see what this Panthers defense can cook up to take advantage of this lowly Texans offense without their starting quarterback. Yeah, I'd rather be me than Davis Mills on uh, tonight. I yes. would, and there's not many times where you pick yourself over an NFL player. I'd rather be me. You know, yeah. Davis Mills, pretty good looking dude, better looking than me. I'd rather be me uh, today uh, th rather than Davis Mills. And you're right. And there is a name that non-football play non-football fans don't know but fo all football fans do and it's Jeremy Chen. I mean this yeah. dude is an absolute monster Thank from the safety you. position. Mm -hmm. Carolina's defense used to be their calling card. That used to be what people feared. It was the run game and it was the defense. And lo and behold Matt Rule coming in with his fairy dust once again seemingly after what he did in Baylor etc in college got a 300 year contract and we're starting to see the fruits of all these little things happening. And yes the defense has done very well through first two weeks as you mentioned 10 sacks 380 total yards etc cetera, etc. Cetera. 
the reason why I focus on the offense is because Sam Darnold has been one of the more, more polarizing characters since the 2018 draft. Is it the Jets? Should he have gone number one overall? Would he have better a better fit in Cleveland than Baker Mayfield, et cetera, et cetera? The dude looks like an NFL player for the first time in his career. Like, yeah. really does. Two weeks in, and you're using Christian McCaffrey to move the ball down the field and score points to win games instead of just seeing people like you and me either playing against or having him on our fantasy team looking like, oh, let's get the kid the rock. Because that was it. Th th this is the first real meaningful football we've seen the Panthers play in years, even through two weeks. Now, let's shift. Let's shift to Houston, okay? It's been a very off-putting offseason, if you can say that, with the whole Deshaun Watson debacle, and that's still obviously right. open-ended. Tyrod Taylor comes in. He's been one of the more star-crossed quarterbacks we've seen over the last couple of years, whether being Cleveland getting injured, Baker Mayfield taking over, and then the heralded uh, doctor from the Chargers uh, uh, accidentally collapsing his lung, you know, sparking Justin Herbert starting immediately <sighs> in his rookie yeah. year. Tyrod Taylor looked great through a week and a quarter before he got hurt. What do you look at from Houston in this game, or is it just like, yikes? Well, I think Houston had some decent success running the ball in week one. That was one of the things with Mark Ingram. They have Phillip Lindsay, David Johnson. I think they had a, a decent core of running backs. The offensive line isn't absolutely miserable right now, so it should give them an opportunity to maybe run the ball. But again, with the Panthers' defense, uh, with what the Panthers have going right now on offense, I fully expect the Panthers to win this game. And although I was a little tepid at the beginning of the segment, my prediction, just to round up our you know Thursday night football preview, my prediction is I do think it ultimately will be a double-digit game. I do think that the Carolina Panthers are not only able to win, but they're able to cover the eight-point spread. I'm going to take the Panthers as 14-point winners, 27-13 to 13 over Houston. What say you? Yeah, that's about right. I'm going to say 24-10. I just think there's going to be a garbage time touch on this defense is so good. The mm -hmm. defense is so, so damn good. And with what they do in Carolina, you can control the clock or you can try and score quickly. They can do both. With Robbie mm -hmm. Anderson, DJ Moore, and Terrence Marshall, the rookie, Terrence they've Marshall, got yeah. weapons, baby. And that division, even though Tom Brady is leading the pack, Carolina seems to be the wild card team through two weeks. Through eight quarters of football, that will come out of the NFC. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland, Tennessee, locked on Tennessee Titans, locked on King Henry. Uh, coming up next, there's a bunch of 2-0 and o teams. Where do they rank? We'll talk about that. But first, this is my favorite. So here, something you don't know about me yet, because this is only the second time I've done the podcast with Tyler. Rock Auto is my favorite child. We have a lot of sponsors here. Parents have a favorite child. If they say they don't, they're lying to you. Rock Auto is my favorite because I don't know anything about cars. So I don't want to go to a chain storefront and say, hey, man, I'm 37 years old. I don't know anything about cars. Can you help me? You go to rockauto.com. They're a family-owned business. They've been online for 20 years. All you do is go to the search box and say, hey, man, paint. Cool. Make and model. Sweet. I'll have that. It'll be delivered in a couple days. It's so easy. You don't get upcharged because you're not a manufacturer. You don't get upcharged like you do at some chain storefronts. Go to rockauto.com. Their prices are reliably low. Right, locked on in their how-did-you-hear-about-us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Well, we are back here, ladies and gentlemen, trying to let me clear my throat. Get ready for the <laughs> second segment. We just did a little Thursday night football preview. Now, we're going to talk about some of the teams in the NFL that are 2-0, and oh, and there are some surprises in there. I would say there are a lot of surprises, and there are a couple of teams that aren't really that surprising. But what we want to do is we don't just want to talk about the teams that are 2-0. and oh. What we want to do is we want to talk about which teams are most likely to go 3-0, and oh, and we're going to do a little bit of a pseudo ranking here. So just to let you know which teams are currently 2-0. and oh. We have two in the AFC. We have about five in the NFC. So the two in the AFC, the Denver Broncos, and the Las Vegas Raiders. So some surprises there. On the NFC side, you have the 49ers. You have the Arizona Cardinals, who Alex obviously knows a lot about. You have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Los Angeles Rams, uh, 
the 49ers, if I didn't already say them, then the Carolina Panthers who are playing tonight. So five teams NFC, two teams AFC. And we're going to start going through these games. And I am just going to go ahead and lead off and say, I think that the 2-0 and team most likely to get to 3-0 and is the team that plays tonight, the Carolina Panthers, simply because they are playing against the destitute Houston Texans who, with Tyrod Taylor, probably had a chance. But now that Tyrod's out, they're playing the rookie quarterback, Davis Mills. I'm going to go with Carolina to move to 3-0 and as my most likely. Alex, would you disagree with that? No, I think that there's a couple tied with that. I mean, I think the, the Cardinals, and this isn't, like uh, we don't we don't do homer takes with, with locked on Cardinals, so this is not a homer take by any stretch. I think traveling to Jacksonville is an equally um, easy. I mean, there's any given obviously easy is very loosely defined in the NFL. Right, okay, anytime right. you go on the road, especially on a short week for Carolina, or especially with a team that's lucky to be two and zero like the Cardinals. Um, but I would say probably those two would be tied because you look at I mean the Rams and Bucks are playing each other. So one team's not going to win. The 49ers right. are hosting Green Bay. Right. So that's that's going to be a very difficult matchup. Uh, and then Miami's coming into town with the Raiders. Maybe you tie them with that. If Tua doesn't play, we'll talk about that next segment. But, I mean, I think you're right. I think Carolina has the the slight edge as the team most likely to go 3-0 through three weeks. Well, yeah. see, see, that's and, – and I'm going to say this. It's a good conversation. I do have the Cardinals on here, but I actually had the Cardinals as the fourth most likely team to go to oh. and know because although they are going to Jacksonville, I just smell a bounce back game for the Jags. And at least they do have their starting quarterback for me. The number two, most likely two and O team to go to three and O is the Denver Broncos. Now they are going on the road to the New York jets. I don't think the jets are quite as bad as they looked last week. Bill Belichick against a rookie quarterback. We know how that goes, but I trust Denver's defense. I trust their weapons on offense and I trust Teddy, Bridgewater. I think that the Jets will ultimately end up being a worse team than the Jags. I know that doesn't seem possible right now, but that's just kind of how I see it. I think the Jags are a little bit better than the Jets. So for me, Denver is my number two team. But then it was a toss-up between the Raiders against the Dolphins and then the Cardinals against the Jags. But again, the Dolphins are playing against a backup quarterback in Jacoby Brissett, who who knows how much worse he is than Tua. Sorry, I'm not, uh, I'm not a Tua stan at all. You can count me as a two a hater, but yeah, I, I think that the the Cardinals against the Jags, the Raiders against the Dolphins, those two are right there as a toss up, three or four either way. But I'm going to place the Denver Broncos over the Jets as more likely to go to three and zero. How do you feel about that Denver matchup? Yeah, you know it's interesting. So what Teddy Bridgewater has gone from when he was in New Orleans is stability from the coaching staff and the offense. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you're going to get with the offense. Okay. You know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get Alvin Kamara. You're going to get Michael Thomas. And it was like the movie Rock. It was like the movie Rockstar. It's a movie I like to reference a lot. Where it doesn't yeah. matter who the the lead singer is, it's going to look the same. You could say that about the 49ers run game. That's one thing that I equated to a lot. But what he where he comes into Denver, which is going to fit him better, is stability on defense. You get stability on defense. You got stability on the run game. Whatever it is, yep. Denver's run game is always going to be middle of the pack or better. And what they've done this offseason, they just have all the cornerbacks. Yeah, I think they have all of them in the NFL. All of them. Justin Simmons got paid over the top. You know, Kyle Fuller, and then they, and then uh, Patrick Sertain Jr. in the draft. Yeah. Like, they're set. So all Teddy Bridgewater has to do is be Teddy Bridgewater. That's it. That's it. And, and they're going to win a bunch of games this year, even in that very, very deep AFC West. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the Jets are terrible. And yeah, what that, Bill Belichick what does against, against rookie quarterbacks is, like, right. how is that consistent as gravity? How is one rookie quarterback not being like, hey, Billy boy, watch this, and not throwing four picks in his first seven attempts or whatever the hell he did? I don't yeah, know. I, I I mean, it's just one of those things. The mastermind of defensive football, Bill Belichick, just refuses to let any young cat uh, give him any kind of damage whatsoever. But moving past those games that we talked about there, which I think are the top four, the, the two games – that have three 2-0 and teams on them that I put at the bottom of my list. You mentioned it earlier. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers go on the road to Los Angeles to play the Rams, and that's why I have the Rams ahead of Tampa Bay in terms of who will go to 3-0. and I have the Rams winning that game. Obviously, it's going to be a toss-up and a tough matchup, but 
The fact is, there are two 2-0 two teams playing each other. One of those teams is not going to be able to go to 3-0, <laughs> and and that's why I have them so far down my list. Just quickly, before we move on to my last ranked game here, and probably yours as well, which team are you signing with just right now as things stand? the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Los Angeles Rams, which could be the game of the week. Yeah, it's interesting because it's, uh, you know, normal thought would say Tampa Bay without breaking a sweat. It's just, you know, Tampa Bay, they've been blowing people out. I'm taking the Rams, and this isn't NFC West by, this isn't anything. It, it really isn't even that they're the home team. It's we know for sure that this defense is good. Yeah, we know for sure. And yes, what we saw last year with Tampa Bay was excellent. Devin White coming into his own, you know, Levante, David, everything. Those cornerbacks got lit up by Jack Prescott. Yeah. And I know that Atlanta, a lot of it was a garbage game, but it was 28-25 midway through the third or early in the fourth before Matt Ryan threw three, three pick sixes, two pick sixes in a row, something like that, which, you know, I mean, Matt Ryan will do that. I'm taking the Rams because their, their floor is higher. Their yeah. ceiling isn't higher, but their floor is. And it's weird to you know go against Tom Brady, but he's got to go cross country. He's 150 years old. I'd rather I, take the Rams. Yeah, I'm Maybe with you, you on say. that. Yeah, I, I I agree with you there. I, I think the I'm leaning Rams in this game, so that's why I had the Bucks at number six. But the number seven ranked two and O team in terms of difficulty and getting to three and O. I have. The San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. I know they won uh, what was a blowout that turned into a close game in week one against Detroit. We know that they won last week as well. But for me, I think that the Green Bay Packers are a better team than the San Francisco 49ers. So I would say even though, you know, San Francisco is 2-0, and I trust the Packers to play well. And I think the Packers win that game. And the 49ers, I have them as my last ranked team when it comes to potential to go 3-0. and Do you agree with that? What yeah. are your final yeah. thoughts there? I mean, if Aaron Rodgers is ever going to show up and say, hey, I can still play football against the 49ers who have embarrassed him a couple years in a row when yeah. they played, you know, Absolutely. in the NFC Championship game. The 49ers don't have a running back. I think they just brought in Chris Thompson. I mean, they, they brought in a bunch of guys. All of their running backs are hurt. You never want anybody to get hurt, but it seems like every year Raheem Mostert's out for the year, and then yeah. they have you know guys there. So, yeah, I'm taking Green Bay to win. If Green Bay can't win this game, what the hell are we doing here? Yeah, it's, it's just a repeat of everything that's been happening to them for the last few years. I'm totally on the same page with you on that, but we are going to talk about some quarterback injuries and some quarterback news to round out today's show. Before we get into that, do want to tell you guys about our friends over at betonline.ag. It is the best place to bet on all the pro and college football action this fall. They have a brand new updated site with a new interface. It shows you all the updated odds, props, and contests. Make sure that you head over to betonline.ag today. Sign up for free, and when you do, use the promo code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On. You'll get a 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit. They're literally giving you free money. When you use the promo code locked on at betonline.ag, bet online the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sports book expert. Also, have to tell you guys about the Get Upside app. My listeners right now are making 25 cents back on every gallon of gas every time they fill up. You can do the same. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. That's promo code TOUCHDOWN. And you'll get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN and get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back. On your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making up to as much as $200, $300 a month in cash back. And there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can then cash out at any time directly to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for something like Amazon or other brands. Just download the free Get Upside app. Use that promo code TOUCHDOWN and get up to $0.50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Remember... The Get Upside app. Use promo code TOUCHDOWN.
Go ahead and bring us back in here for the third and final segment of this Thursday Locked On NFL podcast. Excited to talk about some quarterback injuries, some quarterback news. We started out today's show previewing Thursday night football, which has an injury. Of course, Tyrod Taylor, who's going to be out three to four weeks, was placed on IR with a hamstring injury, but he wasn't the only quarterback who was hurt on uh, on Sunday. We saw Tua Tungavailoa for the Miami Dolphins. He is going to be out with what is now reported as fractured ribs. Sounds very painful, but Tua took a big shot in that game. The Dolphins got absolutely embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills, 35 to nothing, and Jacoby Brissett looked generally lifeless, despite the fact that I think Jacoby Brissett, Jake Brisket, as uh, some like to call him, uh, is not a terrible backup quarterback, but he really struggled in that game. Alex, the question really becomes, do you think the Dolphins are dead in the water, pun intended, or do I you mean, think uh, Jacoby Brissett can lead them to victory? Yeah, I mean, this is not going to be fun for them. Uh, right. Jacoby Brissett, there's one thing that I say, and it's, I, I talk about it a lot during with basketball players where it's like, okay, you're a starter your whole life, and then you're asked to come off the bench. Some performances dip because people are used to doing layup lines, being all sweaty, being ready to roll, and then going and playing instead of sitting on the right. sideline for a while. So when you right. look at Jacoby Brissett jumping in there mid-game, some backup quarterbacks can just do it. They just come in, they play, Chase Daniel, et cetera, guys that have made their money you know, as a backup quarterback in perpetuity can just, they're minute men. They just come in, they're ready to roll and they can play football. Right, right. So I would like, I think he's going to play a little bit better than he did then that they were already up a couple scores. So it's kind of, it's easy for defenses to eat when you're up two or three touchdowns already. So I don't put it all on Jacoby Brissett, but I mean, it's just going to be a tough matchup. It's, but I yeah. mean, for them, they've got a good defense. You know, and they're going to start from scratch. They've got a good defense. They've got some good wide receivers. We'll see if Will Fuller is going to be healthy. I know he's back with the team from a personal reason. They were thinking he yeah. may not be back. So they've got weapons. Jacoby Brissett's got an arm. So they'll be definitely in it more than they were against Buffalo when he came in mid-game. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're playing the Raiders, and although the Raiders have played really well at the beginning of the year, I don't think that the Raiders are some unbeatable force either, so that'll be very interesting to watch. The next quarterback who is suffering from some injuries is Carson Wentz, the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He has two, count them, two sprained ankles, which last time I checked is the maximum amount you can have. He has uh, a, one of his ankles is a high ankle sprain. The other one is a low ankle sprain. Now, he wasn't wearing a boot like he was earlier in the week on Wednesday, but he did not practice, and I think it's kind of a smoke screen. I don't really see Carson Wentz playing in the game on Sunday against the Titans. I think that the Colts are just trying to keep the Titans on their toes, but you don't sprain both of your ankles in that way, wearing a boot earlier in the year, not practice on Wednesday, and then all of a sudden play in the game. So I, I, I think that, that this is a little more concerning than Miami's situation because the Colts haven't been great early on in the year. They're 0-2, and having that spark and that athleticism, you know firsthand that an athletic quarterback who can make some plays in the pocket and scramble around a bit can give the Titans problems. Carson Wentz does have the ability to do that with his athleticism, not quite up to Kyler Murray's standards, but that is something that he's shown he can do with this game. So not having him, having a statuesque quarterback like Jacob Eason, who really didn't play all that well last week, either it was two for five for 25 yards and an interception. Of course, it was very late in the game when he came in as well, but I think this may be a, a, a more dangerous situation for the Colts than it is the Dolphins when it comes to using their backup quarterback. Yeah, and I mean, you look at, I mean, Jacob Beeson had a 0 0.1 QBR last week. That's just fun. I mean, that's fun for me that it wasn't zero. You know, um, yeah, you knew what you were getting with the Colts. Unfortunately for him, you have two sprained ankles. Like, you'd rather have one bad one than two right. medium ones. And obviously, we're making joke. You never want anybody to get injured. But, um, yeah, it's going to be problematic. Again, defense is good. Run game is good. Offensive line is fine. You know, like they have – and and no, I mean, this isn't a, a dig or anything, but the pass rush for the, the Titans isn't the greatest at this point. So you can look at – Maybe have him give it a shot. Have him be active. See how he is in pregame warmups and just see. But yeah, I mean, and you got to feel bad for the Eagles too because this is gonna this is gonna um, get them out of yep. a first snaps. round pick, first round compensatory pick if he doesn't play seventy five percent of the snaps. 
Um, so it, it, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going into this. I don't know. I, I'd almost rather see Jacob Beeson in full strength than Carson Wentz at 40% when he hasn't been great when he was healthy to this point. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure that there are some Colts fans out there who are excited to see what Jacob Eason can do. But I would imagine there are some Titans fans out there who are excited to see what Jacob Eason can do as well. The last bit of quarterback news that we have here for our Locked On NFL Thursday show is news that everyone has wanted to hear. Everyone has been anticipating for quite some time. It didn't come for the reasons that we thought. But hey, by hook or by crook, Justin Fields is now the starting quarterback in Chicago based on an injury to Andy Dalton. He has a bone bruise. Doesn't look like he is going to be out for the entire season. But I guess the real question here is, Alex, do you ever think that Andy Dalton is getting that job back? If he doesn't, he's making 10 mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you there know? are worse ways to lose you your know, job. He's getting paid like a starting quarterback on a rookie scale yeah. contract. Um, no, I don't. Uh, Justin Fields has looked terrible. You know, like he's he's shown flashes, but again, this is a perfect example to I was what I was talking about before. That dude's never been on the bench in his life, ever. Right. He's always been the best player on the field, always. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. fact that he had to come in mid game, this gimmicky in and out stuff, even before Andy Dalton got hurt, they did it in week one. It's like you can't have that dude come in cold. It's never been his thing, ever. And nobody talks about it because he's an NFL athlete. You're getting paid millions of dollars. Go do it. There's right. a mental there's a mental aspect to it. There's a warmed up aspect to it where two throws on the sideline ain't gonna cut it. Yeah. Let the kid play like Zach Wilson is. He's gonna make mistakes, but they have a good structure there. Matt Nagy, we don't know where he is next, but no, I don't think I don't I think it's a firm decision that when Andy Dalton gets hurt and Justin Fields starts once, if he throws one touchdown pass and they lose that game by three points or six points or whatever. And you don't never going to play again unless Justin Fields gets hurt. We you never hope for. Yeah, and you don't want an injury, but I agree with you. And I think uh, I here's one thing that that I said, and I know it seems a little counterintuitive, but but to me, Justin Fields should have been the quarterback day one. But Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are trying to preserve their job. The time doesn't start on them. The clock doesn't start ticking on them until they put Justin Fields in because they can always go back to the owner. They can go to the fan base and say, well, we're grooming the young guy. As soon as the young guy's ready, everything will fall into place. Just give it some time. He's not ready yet, blah, blah, blah. And that's just delaying the inevitable so that they can keep their job for a few more weeks. If they put Justin Fields out there for a couple of weeks and they still lose all those games, well, then the owner and the fan base is going to be like, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, you guys are the problem, which I think that they should know already, but either way. So I think that they put Andy Dalton out there and they want to get Andy Dalton back because it preserves the time on how long they can keep their job. But one way or another, Andy Dalton is out and that time starts right now. So Justin Fields will be starting for the Bears this Sunday. Yeah, and the business side of football sucks. <laughs> I mean, the fact that that goes, into the, that goes into the conversation, but if you appease a fan base and you can win a couple games with Justin Fields, Maybe it'll elongate their inevitable walking the plank status right now. Nobody knew yep. in Chicago that they would have had a chance to get Justin Fields. I mean, let's get that straight right now. If they did, they wouldn't have signed Andy Dalton to a $10 million contract, which is just an interesting wrinkle. So we'll see. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland at Tic Tac Titans locked on Titans. Thank you to everybody who's watched the second episode of Locked on Thursday that Tyler and I have been co-hosting um, Locked on NFL Friday is coming up tomorrow, man. There's going to be a lot of good stuff. Week three is going to be so exciting. There are so many different storylines. We will get you all up to date. Subscribe to the Locked on NFL YouTube channel. Um, follow him at Locked on t at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter. Follow me at Clancy's Corner. Check out him at Locked on Titans. Man, you guys do some great stuff over there, dude. And I love the little twang. I love it. I wish I had it. I'm just loud, abrasive, and raspy. And um, I think it's working so far for both of us. Be sure to check out Locked on Bets. Betting on the Titans, on the Cardinals, doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast, also by your boy Q, and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's Lock of the Day. You want to listen to that. Follow the Locked on Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag. Wherever you get your podcast, Locked on NFL rolls on tomorrow. We'll talk to you next week.